Shri Bhagavad, the author of the book and the audio album Don't Delay Enlightenment, has been an ardent spiritual aspirant right from his age of 18. After strenuous seeking in the domain of spirituality, he suddenly attained enlightenment one day when he was 58. However, he did not turn ecstatic but was perplexed as to why it took 40 years for him to attain enlightenment which is attainable just within seconds. So he took a vow to get the humanity a perfect understanding of the human mind and thereby attain enlightenment within seconds. Hence the book and the audio album Don't Delay Enlightenment. First chapter Don't Delay Enlightenment Enlightenment is regarded as the highest state in the spiritual field. Every spiritual aspirant longs to attain enlightenment, but how long should one practice to attain enlightenment? 10 years, 12 years, 20 years or lifelong? There is a spiritual story of King Janaka. It is said that once King Janaka was listening to the lessons of Vedantic scriptures. In a scripture it was said that one can attain enlightenment within the time while fixing one leg on one side of the saddle and mounting the horse. In short, it has been said that one can get enlightenment just within seconds. Is it true? Janaka also asked the same question to his teacher who taught the Vedantic scriptures. But unfortunately, the teacher was not an enlightened one, so he was unable to clear the doubt of the king. The king was very much eager to verify the truth of the sayings of the scripture. He asked every such teacher to explain the truth of the sayings, but nobody could explain except Saint Ashtavakra. He taught Janaka and made him realize the truth. Thereby, Janaka understood that one can attain enlightenment within seconds. He understood the truth by attaining enlightenment within seconds by himself. Thus, King Janaka proved that one can attain enlightenment within seconds. Is it possible for us also to attain it as in the case of the king, as described in the Vedantic scriptures? J. Krishnamurti used to say the same thing during his earlier talks. You are planting a seedling of grape. You water it, nurture it and maintain it. The grape plant grows and after a certain period of time it gives grape fruits, but it takes time. You have to wait for the fruit, but what I am telling you is something totally different. I ask you to come with the grape seeds and at the end of my hour long talk, you may return home with grape fruits. It needs no time to produce fruits. You may get enlightenment instantaneously. J.K. used to talk like that during that period, but in his later talks he said differently. I have been talking to you for over six decades. You are also listening to me for years, but you have not changed. Where has the mistake occurred? Who is responsible for that? J.K. was sure that no time is required for the change for the enlightenment and so he asked where the mistake occurred. We are practicing so many spiritual methods for years together. Nevertheless, the enlightenment is evading us. Why? We are sincere in our practice. We are very earnest but still the enlightenment is evading us. Why? If it were true that one can attain enlightenment within seconds, then why are we not getting it so far? 
In fact, the Vedantic statement is true. It is not false. We are belating our enlightenment only because of our wrong approach to it. Why is our approach so wrong? Are we not practicing it on the instructions of noble persons? Are they not reliable persons? Are their instructions wrong? The noble persons are correct to a certain extent. Their instructions are very powerful. Those are very much useful to the spiritual aspirants. It is no doubt that they provide great progress with an aspirant in the spiritual field. But they help an aspirant only to a certain extent. They prepare one fit for enlightenment. All practices give us some state of experiences. The experiences may be heavenly and marvelous, but enlightenment does not occur as an experience because the enlightenment is not an experience at all. All experiences last for a certain period. It is the nature of all experiences. They come to a spiritual aspirant and last for a certain period. Then they fade away as they come. But it is not so in the case of enlightenment. Enlightenment when it comes once does not go away, it lasts forever. If anyone gets enlightenment, he needs no practice to retain it. It is the nature of enlightenment. Is there any special practice for enlightenment then? No practice will take one to enlightenment. All practices result only in various gorgeous experiences. There is no casual connection between enlightenment and spiritual practice. Then what is the way for enlightenment if practice is not the way? It comes only by way of understanding. We have to understand what enlightenment is and what the obstacles are for enlightenment. Mere understanding of what enlightenment is itself brings enlightenment. Understanding the truth of enlightenment itself acts and brings enlightenment instantaneously. If one understands what enlightenment is, the matter is over. He does not need any practice on the idea obtained through the understanding. The understanding itself is action. We cannot separate action from understanding. What is the true nature of such understanding? Is it possible only for a mature mind or only for wise people? Does it need great intelligence? No. Anybody can have the understanding. It is very simple. The intelligence needed for understanding an ordinary storybook is enough for this kind of understanding too. Such kind of ordinary intelligence is enough for this understanding also. Now, what is understanding? What is the nature of this understanding which brings enlightenment? Is it intellectual or practical? For example, I ask about your house and the way to it. You explain the way to your house, the street, the location and the appearance of your house. Thereby, I get an idea about your house and the way to it. It is only an intellectual idea about your house. Then, I physically go to your house and practically know your house, the structure, the location and the way to it. First, I get an intellectual idea about your house. Later, after my personal visit to it, I get a practical and actual knowledge about your house. Intellectual knowledge is different from practical and actual knowledge. Intellectual knowledge is imaginary, but practical knowledge is 
realistic is it so in the case of understanding the understanding which brings enlightenment no it is not so in the matter of understanding which brings enlightenment there is no such distinction between intellectual understanding and practical understanding in the case of reaching the house there is intellectual understanding of the house thereafter we get practical and actual understanding intellectual understanding comes first and afterwards comes actual understanding it is so in the case of worldly activities but it is not so in the case of enlightenment there is no difference between intellectual and actual understanding it is only intellectual out and out intellectual the intellectual clarity is enough for enlightenment we need not try to make the intellectual clarity into actual clarity there is no such actual clarity apart from intellectual clarity we need not expect anything more than the intellectual clarity we have a lot of false ideas about enlightenment that is why we are belating enlightenment it is enough if we have a correct idea of what enlightenment is the very intellectual idea of what enlightenment is itself blossoms as enlightenment please take the example of a school boy who works out his mathematical sum the working out of his sum is totally intellectual he solves the sum only through an intellectual process similarly the understanding of the nature of enlightenment is also purely intellectual the enlightenment that happened to buddha is regarded as a rare and a great one but it happened in seconds under the bodhi tree it is not an ordinary enlightenment even today it is considered to be extraordinary really it is extraordinary because after that one does not have any doubt about anything he gets all his doubts cleared one becomes a light for oneself but this extraordinary enlightenment is an ordinary one because you and i can attain the same very easily and just within seconds we need not confuse ourselves whether it is possible for us to attain the state of buddha within the span of our life or not it is possible and possible in seconds if we know what is meant by enlightenment the very knowledge of what enlightenment is itself will be enough to attain enlightenment we have read many things about enlightenment we take ourselves to be this body and mind but we are not so we are something else something more we are really the atman the holy spirit beyond body and mind atman is the base of our body and mind since we have our mind functioning outwardly we think that we are mere body and mind therefore we do not have any idea or knowledge about atman that is ourselves if we are able to divert our attention inwardly towards ourselves into the root of ourselves we may be able to realize our real being the atman that is ourselves it is enlightenment if one could know oneself as atman this is jnana so understanding our real nature is enlightenment the spiritual texts are saying like this we are dreaming in our sleep in the dream for example we are caught in a danger along with our friends we have to escape from the danger 
at this instance someone is knocking at our door at once we wake up from sleep and the dream also ends there we come to realize that we are not in danger and have no necessity to do anything to our friends we know that we are safely lying in bed in a protected room in the same way the atman is always safe and pure it is only in a dream like state we feel that we are in danger this is how the spiritual books describe the role and place of atman it is obvious from these books that the atman is pure and self illumining without any ignorance by this description we may presume something about atman and its purity but it does not give us enlightenment because enlightenment is totally different one can get enlightenment if one knows what enlightenment is the very knowledge of what enlightenment is itself brings enlightenment so please for the time being do not rely upon the descriptions of the scriptures about what enlightenment is we feel that we are ordinary human beings with all our bad and good qualities of mind so naturally we feel that we cannot attain enlightenment until we are free from our bad qualities of mind we think that we can get enlightenment only after the purification of our heart and mind so we struggle for the purification of our heart and mind it is said that buddha himself did so many meditational practices undertaking so many penances following as many austerities only after that and after the purification of heart and mind it is said he attained enlightenment but in truth neither the quality of the mind nor the quality of the heart prevents our enlightenment it is our conclusions that they are blocking our enlightenment conclusions yes our conclusions are the only obstacles for our enlightenment how we already have some idea about what enlightenment is not only that we also have so many ideas about various things for example we are having an idea about what good is and what bad is we are having ideas about various meditations and their effects life death life after death sin karma and so on in the same way we have various ideas revealed by many spiritual heads and enlightened persons our ideas about all of them all together formulated our conclusions and we feel that our conclusions are correct unless we are free from our conclusions we cannot take any new step as all of our conclusions are only intellectual it is not difficult for us to free ourselves from them if we clutch our conclusions adamantly we can never extricate ourselves from them if we are not so much adamant with our conclusions there are some possibilities for the liquidation and the rearrangement of conclusions we must be somewhat liberal lenient and open to our conclusions so that we can entertain and understand new ideas enlightenment itself is an intellectual process this fact itself also cannot be accepted by many people because they have some other idea about enlightenment so it will be difficult for them to accept the fact that 
Enlightenment itself comes within the intellectual field. At present, we need not confuse ourselves with this kind of statement. We are going to deal with this fact in detail later. Now, let us know about our basic needs. Are there any prerequisites for the understanding which bring enlightenment? Yes, there are some prerequisites for the understanding of enlightenment. They are 1. The spiritual aspirant must have some interest and earnestness in the spiritual life. It is not necessary that he must have done so many hard meditational practices. 2. He must have some familiarity with the ordinary books available in the spiritual field. It is not necessary. He must have mastered all the spiritual literatures. It means that he must have some basic knowledge in this field. 3. He must have an open mind to accept reasonable ideas. He should not be adamant with his conclusions and ideas that he already has got in his mind. 4. He should not entertain the pessimistic idea that he cannot attain enlightenment in this span of his life. If one has the above set ordinary, simple and reasonable prerequisites, he can easily attain enlightenment and liberation just within seconds. Since such enlightenment involves no practice, the question of time does not arise at all. Time is necessary only for practice and effort. Practice and effort will give us some experiences alone. The experiences may be noble and marvelous, but they will not give us enlightenment. Here we do not require to do or have any such thing for enlightenment. What is required is to have an intellectual understanding of what enlightenment is. So we need not delay ourselves for our enlightenment. We can get enlightenment within seconds if we are open.